Greetings friends and welcome to my new channel, Critical Nobody. I'm Craig, just some nobody on the internet that likes to critique things, specifically video games. And in honor of this, my first video of my new show, new chapter for me here on YouTube, I figured I would take a look at something that I'd never played before, get a fresh perspective, and see how it goes. In a genre that I'm actually very familiar with, a genre well known for its easy pick up and play gameplay and mindless fun. Shooters. Ah, good old shooters. There's nothing quite like coming home after a long day, grabbing that virtual rifle, shotgun, laser cannon, whatever, and just mowing down a bunch of bad guys. There's just a simple joy in it, I think we can all agree on that. And while some might argue that the shooter genre has become oversaturated in recent years, when they're done well, they're an absolute blast to play. But what happens when they're not done well? At all. Although, how bad? Really, can a bad shooter be? They pretty much nailed this style of gameplay in the 90s with, like, Doom. So how much can someone screw up something made just last generation? So bad. Legendary was released holiday 2008 for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC, which is the version I'll be playing. It came out to little fanfare, at least from what I remember, and reviewers of the time were very unkind to it, with scores of 2.5 out of 10, 3.5 out of 10, and hey, even a few 7s. Guess can't be that bad, right? The game begins with an incredibly rushed exposition dump that explains various secret organizations have been fighting for control of the legendary <laughs> Pandora's box, which is rumored to hold unimaginable power. Some big, evil, rich guy named LeFay, who controls the Black Order, wants the box, and hires a highly skilled thief, Charles Deckert, your player character, to break into the museum where the box is being held. Oh, and there's some woman named Vivian there too, who's... important? Deckert makes his way into the museum and uses all his thieving expertise, cunning, and skill to get past the incredibly complex security that protects this priceless artifact. Or, you know, he just does that. Upon entering the room, Deckard is drawn to the box, which is constantly whispering, by the way. Probably a good indication to not mess with it. And opens it with some kind of key, when suddenly... So it turns out that opening Pandora's box is bad. Who knew? A glowing signet is burned onto Deckard's hand and the museum begins crumbling all around him. At this point, you're given control and after a very brief tutorial, a tutorial that pretty much explains what the signet is in a couple of sentences, removing just about any mystery it could have had, you're tasked with getting the hell out of the museum. So you run through the halls, witnessing the terrible destruction all around you as floors begin to break. Innocent people run covered in blood even though nothing has happened yet that would cause bleeding, and bodies litter the floor, at least until they fade out of existence. I know we just started, but I have to address how ugly virtually every aspect of the presentation is here. You know how a lot of people said that action games were getting more brown and gray every year? Well, Legendary doesn't even have brown. The whole thing is just a low-quality, dull, gray mess. The blood doesn't even look like blood. All the people covered head to toe don't look like they've sustained fatal injuries. They look like things got out of hand at a Smucker's convention. Deckert finally makes his way outside, only to find that it's no safer than the museum was. Confused, injured people litter the streets, staring up at a strange light in the sky, when a sudden shockwave rips through the city. It's not long after this that the kind of enemy you'll be encountering is introduced, and holy crap, griffins! This is admittedly the one somewhat cool thing Legendary has going for it. Just about every shooter nowadays has you fighting the same basic things, usually soldiers or aliens, but here you're fighting various mythical creatures. Griffins, werewolves, fire... crocodiles? These guys are usually reserved for fantasy RPGs, not action-heavy first-person shooters. It's a neat idea that could be really cool if done right. Unfortunately, this is legendary. Avoiding the swarm of griffins, I pick up a fire axe and soon after that a pistol, finally getting my first taste of combat against these lava roly-poly lizard things. And it's awful. The movement is so stiff and jarring that turning feels like someone is constantly off to either side, yanking your arm toward where you want to look. Things don't improve when iron sighting, which tends to obscure too much of the screen, and is so rigid that it kind of feels like it's on some sort of set grid. 
It's the kind of poor control that you never really get used to. I'm using a controller, by the way, but I can't imagine anything improving with a keyboard and mouse. Plus, the guns lack any kind of impact. The pistol pretty much gets forgotten about after 20 minutes, and the two or three automatic weapons feel like they're shooting BBs instead of bullets. The shotgun is the only thing that feels like it has any oomph whatsoever, but it's still far from satisfying to use. Oh, and grenades are thrown with all the enthusiasm of a wet napkin. This is honestly one of the worst shooters I've ever played. And I've played Duck Dynasty. So you fight your way through subways and city streets, shooting more fire lizards and some human soldiers belonging to LaFay's personal army. Soon after that, you encounter your first werewolf. Here, the game instructs you that werewolves will regenerate unless decapitated, much like Highlanders. But hey, at least this is a new element to the combat, right? I figured they'd be used sparingly, peppered into fights with other creatures as a constant threat you'd have to avoid until you could deal a finishing blow. The in-game entry on werewolves even tells you that you should use the fire axe to finish the job. So I pump bullets into the thing until it goes down, whip out my axe, and... There we go. Turns out that werewolves are actually one of the main enemies in the game. You encounter them all the time, and they can be dealt with just by shooting them in the head. But since the controls are so crippled, it's actually a better tactic to just stand perfectly still while they charge you and shoot in their general direction until their head pops. Fun. Deckard meets up with Vivian in the subway station, and she tells him that LeFay betrayed them both, and the only way they'll survive is if they join forces with a different secret organization called the Council of 98 who just so happened to show up like a minute later led by a guy named Lexington. While untrusting for about 10 seconds, the Council decides to form an alliance and help the two of them out, largely thanks to their curiosity for the mark on Deckard's hand. Oh yeah, I should probably explain that thing. Like I said earlier, one of the first things the game does is immediately explain the brand on your hand. When you kill creatures, they leave behind a glowing ball of light called Animus Energy. You absorb this energy into your hand and primarily use what's stored to regenerate health. You also unlock a kind of force push ability pretty quickly too that'll stun enemies for a few seconds, but I personally forgot I could even do it most of the time. Aside from the powers of the Signet being kind of incredibly lame, having to stop and absorb energy all the time, and I mean after just about every encounter, is just tedious. Whatever pacing Legendary was going for is constantly interrupted when you have to stop and collect all the magic glowing balls littered everywhere. So anyway, the Council and Deckard team up and attempt to take down an iron golem stomping through the city, a towering giant constructed from various things like cars and rubble. In all honesty, this is another potentially cool thing to fight. Think of the possibilities. Do you jump into a helicopter and take it on from the sky? Or maybe you have to dodge to attack Shadow of the Colossus style and blow it apart with rockets or something. Nope! Turns out all you have to do is activate three EMPs scattered around the level. In fact, you spend most of this chapter underground, so you barely even see the damn thing. It's just a background element that you deal with away from all the action. Another setup for a potentially cool, badass action set piece, and you just completely squander it? You have this massive beast stomping around the city, destroying everything in its wake, and you beat it by hitting three goddamn buttons? This isn't Aliens Colonial Marines. Do something interesting! So you destroy the golem, recover Pandora's box, and head off to investigate a secret lab that LeFay uses for his 100% totally not at all evil research. This seems like a good time to talk about invisible walls, because this level is full of them. I mean, don't get me wrong, the game has had them throughout already, but this level has them seemingly at every turn. See this ledge? Can't get over it. See this giant human-sized hole in the wall? Can't go there either. There are tons of spots you should easily be able to reach, but just can't. I should be able to get up here, right? But no, first I have to jump onto the box that's like half an inch higher, and then all of a sudden I can make it up there. The most baffling invisible wall I found was right here. I can't move forward anymore. Wanna know why? Because of a tiny piece of wood on the ground. A piece of wood that acts as a barrier on one side, but lets me easily walk over it on the other. Expert thief and unstoppable gunman Charles Deckard can't easily walk over this. My squad mates and I continue our assault on the lab when- there, there it is! Minotaur! Minotaur! Now this fight has got to be cool. 
The way this battle is supposed to work is you dodge out of the way of the Minotaur's attacks and shoot him in the back for greater damage. It's simple, but hey, at least the combat actually has some kind of strategy to it now, right? Unfortunately, no. See, this guy never stops charging you, and I mean never. His horns are up your ass the entire time, so there's no breathing room. And while the data entry on the Minotaur specifically says you're supposed to dodge and shoot him in the back, there's just one small problem. There is no dodge maneuver, no sidestep or roll or anything like that, so how are you supposed to get out of the way? This means the real strategy for defeating this guy is just shoot him a lot until eventually he falls down. And not five minutes after that fight, you have to deal with a griffin. Now there have been a lot of griffins throughout the game up to this point, but this is your first chance to actually fight one. And guess what? It constantly charges you while you shoot at it a lot until eventually it falls down. That's it! It doesn't even fly at all! Best boss fight. A plus. 10 out of 10. So you get something from the lab and take it back to the council's base, where Vivian reveals to you LeFay's ultimate plan. Apparently, he's built some kind of machine that he can connect to Pandora's box to control all the creatures and take over the world. And so that's why he hired Decker to open the box in the first place. Wait. Why did he have Deckard open the box at all? What purpose could that have served? All he did was unleash things he couldn't control, get a bunch of his men killed, and introduce an unknown element in Deckard. Why not just use the massive army at his disposal, who's been more than willing to die for him up to this point, to break into the museum and steal the box in the first place? It's not like they couldn't move it, it had to get into the exhibit room somehow. If he had just done that in the first place, then he could have easily hooked Pandora's box up to his machine and taken over the world without anyone being able to stop him. Lefay, you're dumb. Unsurprisingly, whatever was stolen from the lab had a tracker on it, and so the base you're in gets attacked. You fight off more of the same creatures and Black Order soldiers you've been dealing with the entire game before making it to the roof to fight off griffins with a rocket launcher. This proves to be... underwhelming. At this point, the game decides to... Release the Kraken! Which you defeat by standing in one general spot and firing rockets into its mouth. It's then you're told that while fighting off the attackers, both Pandora's box and Vivian were captured, entirely off screen. So now it's time for the final push against LeFay. Shoot more dudes, ride up a few elevators, and oh hey, there's Vivian. So you rescue her and she tells you that she's unlocked an elevator that will take you to the roof where LeFay's machine is. After taking out a few more werewolves and bad men with guns, I board the elevator to the final encounter and... Get to the power control booth and wait for me there. This happened every time I got on the elevator. The elevator, I remind you, I need to get on in order to reach the end of the game. I reloaded checkpoints, restarted the game, even replayed the entire level a second time, but each time, death. After a bit of research, I learned that this is actually an issue with the PC version of Legendary, and while I could tweak some files or cheat to see the end of the game, I just really don't care enough to. I'm actually kind of satisfied with this ending, where the segment, I don't know, killed Deckard and sent him to hell before he could stop the villain. Let's face it, it's probably a better ending than this game actually has. But I know you guys want closure. I know you want to see how this train wreck of a game ends. So, thanks to the magic of YouTube, here it is, in all its glory, the ending to Legendary. LeFay gets murdered by a werewolf griffin impalement combo, and Deckard overloads the machine by giving it animus energy, causing Pandora's box to explode. Deckard is betrayed by the Council as they capture him so they can further study the Signet in hopes of undoing everything that's happened. But Deckard's all like, fuck that, and escapes to go on a quest to pet all the griffins in the world. And much like the rest of the game, the ending is rushed, dumb, and incredibly unsatisfying. Legendary is absolute garbage. It gets everything wrong, from its stiff and awkward gunplay to its ugly presentation and rushed, unfulfilling story. It's only about five hours long, but feels like it drags on for at least double that time. There might be a somewhat neat premise behind it, but that just makes it all the more worse that instead of being a refreshing take on the genre with unique enemy encounters, it instead came out as a total mess. It might be cliché to say, but there's nothing legendary about Legendary other than how terrible it is. I think I got it on a Steam sale for 50 cents, and I still feel like I paid too much for it. Uh, I need to go play something else to make up for the five hours I just wasted. Die, die, die. Die.
Oh, that's better. Hi guys, thank you so much for checking out this video here on my new channel. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm sure there were rough spots, but I can iron those out in time, maybe, hopefully. If you did actually like the video, then please be sure to leave a rating down below. It does help out a lot. I'm open to any feedback you guys have, improvements I could make, things you like, things you didn't, things you'd want me to cover uh, on this channel here. So uh, be sure to leave all of that down below in a comment. And uh, please consider subscribing to the channel if you liked what you saw and you want to see more from me. I'm going to be doing these kind of videos as well as reviews of more modern stuff, which you should see coming up very soon. So uh, again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.